Hello and welcome. Today we are doing a Key Stage 3 biology video on the topic of pollination in flowering plants. And pollination, very importantly, is the transfer of pollen from an anther to a stigma. The transfer of pollen from anther to stigma. Anther being the male part of the plant, stigma being a female part of the plant. Now, this can be transferred in two ways. The first way we're going to look at is insect pollination. So here we have our insect. Very commonly, it will be a bee. The bee will come along attracted to a flower by the petals, the colorful petals. It will go in and collect some nectar, maybe fly around a little bit more, and then go to another flower to collect some more nectar attracted by the petals. We can summarize what happens. The insect is attracted to a flower by the scent, the smell, and by the presence of nectar. Once it gets there, the pollen attaches to the insect's body. And then the insect flies to another plant, another flower, where the pollen attaches to the stigma, to the stigma of the other flower. So this is how insect pollination happens. Remember, this is just the process of pollination, transferring the pollen. We can also do this by wind pollination. The flower has to be, or the plant has to be structured differently. Look at the anthers on this plant. The anthers are the male part that produce the pollen and they protrude out into the air. So they're protruding quite a long way or poking out quite a long way. They produce lots and lots of pollen as shown by these red dots. And this pollen can be carried by the wind. So lots and lots of pollen produced. Along comes some wind as shown by that blue line there. There's our wind. And as you can imagine, the pollen grains are carried by the wind or blown to an anther on another plant. So pollen is blown to another plant by the wind. And there you can see the pollen being blown over. But this time it attaches, remember, not to the anthers on the other plant, but it attaches to the long feathery stigmas. So the stigmas are structured very differently in a wind pollinated plant. They're long and feathery. And it's important that they're long and feathery and hanging out of the plant because the stigma or the stigmas can catch the pollen as it flows or as it is carried by the wind. So very important that we know that the plant produces pollen in large amounts. So the plant must produce a lot of very small and very light pollen grains or pollen. Small and light pollen grains so it is easily carried by the wind. Remember most don't reach stigmas or most, most don't reach another plant. Most of them are just blown away and don't actually reach another plant. So it has to produce lots and lots of these small light pollen grains to increase the chances of meeting a stigma from another plant. So for the final part of this video, we can do a comparison of insect versus wind pollinated plants. So on the left hand side, we have an insect pollinated plant. And on the right hand side, we have a wind pollinated plant. So the key difference is, firstly, insect pollinated plants, they must have flowers with brightly colored petals and a scent. A scent means a smell. And this is to attract insects. The flowers can also produce nectar. And again, that's to attract insects. The pollen grains that are produced by insect pollinated plants are sticky. So they stick to the body of the insect that visits them. So they stick to the insect. And the stigma, the female part of the plant, is often sticky so that the pollen, when it arrives on the insect, 
sticks to it. And this helps with the process of pollination. For our wind pollinated plants, we have small dull petals or no petals on the flowers because there's no need to attract any insects. They're not using insects for pollination, so we don't need brightly colored flowers or brightly colored petals on flowers. No nectar is produced because again, we're not attracting any insects, so we don't need to have any nectar. And importantly, the pollen grains, as we said before, are very small and very light. So they are easily carried by the wind and they, are, and they can be carried long distances by the wind. And then we have the stigma that is structured slightly differently and the anthers poke out and produce lots of pollen. Uh, the anthers poke out so that they can catch the wind. And the stigma is long and feathery, very important. Again, to catch any pollen grains that are passing by on the wind. So there we go. You might need to go over this one or two more times, but uh, if not, you can use the work along sheet in the description below so you can make some notes so you don't have to come back to the video if you don't need to. However, that's it for the video on pollination. We've done a comparison of wind versus insect pollination and how each process works. So that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.